What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today I'm bringing you a very cool tutorial on the 4 instruction. So the 4 instruction is something that is taken out of a very common language such as C++ and Java. However, in ladder logic it could be a little bit confusing because the structure is a little bit different. That being said, once you've implemented it once or twice, you will know exactly what its, uh, what its purpose is and essentially how to apply it in order to make your programs a lot more efficient. This is an advanced uh, instruction. This is not something that I would recommend uh, you would be using on a regular basis, but it is something that you need to be familiar with. And like I've said, it can greatly simplify your uh, your coding. Let's get right into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is essentially demonstrate a non loop implementation of this alarm function. And what you will see here is just one rung. Uh, actually, there's going to be two rungs. So in the first one, we're going to look at this essentially empty string. So the empty string is just a placeholder for a string which does not contain any characters. And if the current fault description is is also empty, meaning that there is no fault in your system. And then a certain alarm is enabled. For whatever reason, you have an over temp alarm, you have a motor alarm, you have a uh, placement alarm, you have an over travel alarm. So just a definition, think of this as an array of different alarms. So you have alarm zero, one, two, three, and I've essentially not implemented all of them, but you could have as many as thousands of alarms uh, that I've seen in a normal scenario. And what happens here is, so when you have no fault and a certain fault occurs, you want to capture the description of that particular fault within your uh, fault description description essentially string. So what you're doing is you're copying the alarm definition for that particular alarm into that fault definition into that fault description, sorry. And that's going to be 20 characters. And you're essentially latching in a bit which is going to be a system fault bit uh, at the end of that operation because you are indeed faulted. And since the string is no longer going to be uh, is no longer going to be empty, uh, I had to latch in this bit and I'm going to show you where that's unlatched, which is in the next rung. So if a system resets, so think of this just a push button on your HMI or just on your system in general. So you hit a system reset, the empty string, which once again, contains absolutely nothing, it's get, it gets copied back into the fault description. Um, and of course, you need to set up ways that you check for, you know, if the alarm is still present, or it's been uh, cleared by somebody else. So this is not a full implementation of a system, but it's essentially a way to capture alarms. And a system fault bit is unlatched in order to make sure that the system is not faulted. And at that point, you know, you could start the machine, for example. So the way this works is, uh, first of all, I have different descriptions. So all it is is just fault zero, fault one fault two and so on. But essentially, you'd give it a meaningful description. But let's say alarm one is triggered. So I'm just going to control T, which triggers that particular bit. And so for example, you have an over temp, this becomes active, as you can see, the current fault description is going to be fault one. Uh, and the system is faulted. Of course, if you go below the temp, you still have retained the fault description because what you want to prevent from happening is somebody, uh, you know, for example, the temperature goes up and then it goes down for whatever reason, and then it clears the fault automatically. So you've essentially captured the fault and you're able to see it in your fault description uh, bit. But I want you to be aware that this is a very, you only have four alarms here. If you wanted to implement, like I said, a thousand, you would have to essentially copy paste this wrong. You'd need to, you know, make sure sure that you have this under some kind of a structure. So this would be extremely troublesome. So this is where a loop comes in. So whenever you have a repeating structures, you can always or almost always replace them with a loop And in most situations. Uh, this becomes more efficient if you have, uh, you know, rungs which start to uh, kind of go over the screen and it's just becoming very troublesome to uh, troublesome or time consuming to implement. So let's go back into our main within this test program. So here, like I said, this is just the ba basic uh, implementation in the non loop program. However, here I have a for loop, which is uh, cycling through uh, a whole lot of different indices. And the way the for, for loop or for instruction works is that first of all, you need a routine name. So it always calls a routine which it will execute. The next thing that we have is an index. So an index is, is essentially a double integer or an integer, which is going to increment in certain intervals, then you're going to have the initial value. So you you can essentially uh, specify from and two values just like you would in C++. 
uh, or any other advanced language. So the initial value in my case is going to be zero because the alarms begin at zero and the terminal value is going to be 255. And the step size, since I have alarm at zero, one, two, three, and of course this depends on your application of the for loop, it could be different. So this is, uh, you know, again, in your languages, this is going to be I plus plus, which you can be of course, uh, plus equals two. So you can do in steps of two and or more. Uh, let's go look at the implementation of this loop. So I want to, first of all, I'm going to, let's take a step back here and I'm going to disable this. Essentially, I'm going to AFI this uh, routine. Actually, I'm just going to, um, I'm, I've saved this program uh, actually, let's let's go through a full implementation. I haven't thought this through extremely well, but we're going to use this alarm two instead of this uh, alarm one, just to make it simple. So let's let's just get rid of this. Let's confirm this. This is going to remain as is. So there's going to be essentially two alarm indices. So in our loop. Uh, what I currently have is just if the alarm is set, then it's, it's going to display that system is faulted. Let's go back to our non loop implementation and essentially take a few pieces from there. So the system reset is not going to be sitting in our loop because that's just going to be a, uh, a single implementation. So that's going to go into our main routine. Uh, and let's let's just rename everything as two. So at the same time, you can see me uh, create a bit of logic. So that's going to be system reset two empty string, empty string can uh, remain fall description is going to be fall description two. System faulted two. system reset is going to be just a simple Boolean. So we're going to create that inside of our test, empty string. This is going to be a string of 20 characters, which will reside locally. Okay, that looks good. Let's go back into the loop. So like I have mentioned before, the loop is going to repeat through this one single alarm rung. And it's essentially going to virtualize all those different branches. However, we still need to uh, copy a couple of so we need to copy this equality. And we're going to latch in system fault faulted to like we've done before, this is going to be description number two. And it should be currently empty. And I also need to give so I'm going to monitor this alarm two, and I'm going to give it a few descriptions. Uh, no, this is these are the boolean. Sorry about that. Actually, we need to copy what did we do here, we need to copy. Let's take this instruction in here. And we're going to give those let's see here. So copy alarm description. Actually, I think this should be okay. So the same alarm descriptions are going to apply to the second alarms as they did for the first ones. Um, and so let's look at this a little bit. Let's, uh, let's compile our code. Make sure that everything is running correctly, we don't have any errors. That looks good. So the first thing that we want to look back at is at the loop function. So let's scroll up a little bit here. And you will notice that the index is essentially cycling extremely fast. Uh, and it's going every every cycle of the PLC, essentially, it's resetting by a one or it's uh, being incremented by one. And when it's incremented by one, it caused this routine name loop. Now within this loop function, you've probably noticed that I've used this index instead of specifying, a, you know, the normal array index that you're all used to, you know, zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. It's no longer a constant, it's now an index. So so think of this as this particular rung repeats every single time at a different index. So for example, this would be equals because there's no uh, there's no modifiers. But this would be alarm two at zero alarm two at one alarm two at three alarm two at four, so on and so forth. And just uh, just similarly to that we can use index within the same description. So the string array uh, functions exactly the same way as those boolean array. And of course, the index can be used uh, to uh, specify the position of our description, we already have the descriptions. Um, one thing to notice is that it's difficult to toggle these bits through this particular rung of logic, which is perhaps the drawback of um, of these, uh, this particular implementation. So what we need to do here is essentially go into this alarm two. Uh, and number two, and for example, if we're going to toggle this bit, we have alarm number two, which has occurred. And you will notice that our system has faulted. And after the fault description is going to be fault number two. Now I can clear this. 
I'm just tabbing through the many windows that I have open so I can clear this back to zero. And at this point, I can reset the system back from my main routine. Let's see here. So system reset two. I'm going to toggle this. Uh, this should have cleared the description which we have here. And now we can toggle a different fault. So for example, if we go back to uh, by the way, I'm using control tab in case you're curious about the shortcut. If we trigger the first alarm, right click toggle bit. And I'm going to untoggle it just immediately so we can we can go back. I'm pretty confident that's going to work. So fault one has been copied from the description of that fault into this particular register. So really, really cool uh, implementation because it allows you to save all that time and essentially uh, save you from copy pasting all these rungs and pasting this alarm zero, alarm one, alarm two, alarm three. And this is something that I'm actually really quickly, I'm, I will show you another example, which is so I have a lot of these inputs. And as you know, uh, the inputs come in on the hardware. So on the input card, you will have different inputs coming into your PLC. And I have them listed right here. That being said, on the right side, all I'm doing is energizing a single bit. But the application that I'm uh, that I was going for is essentially I want to debounce every single input that I have on my PLC. And I want to do that very systematically. I don't want to uh, essentially create a loop around this and then add a timer and then add another bit which is being energized and I want to have a delay off for my bid, for example, on the input side as well. So what I've created here is up all the way at the end, I have this loop function, which essentially cycles through the 16 inputs currently present on the PLC. And of course, I'm going to expand the system and it's going to have a lot more inputs. And all I need to do is essentially just expand this index to a lot more uh, to accommodate a lot more uh, inputs. That being said, let's look at the input loop. So in the input loop, all I'm doing is I'm essentially creating that one timer. I'm creating one that once the timer is done, I'm in, I am energizing that one bit. Therefore, it's essentially very conveniently creating a structure which allows me to uh, essentially create a timer on delay so that the input comes in, but then only uh, 500 milliseconds later, the actual bit is being set. Similarly, if the input is being low, so the timer off is activated, uh, timer off delay. And then after 500 milliseconds, that out uh, that input is being uh, de energized. And you can use this all over the program after it's been processed. But as you can see, this is only a single rung of code versus if I wanted to do that for every single input, I would have had to uh, copy that massive rung in here. And then I would have to manually input all of those indices. So if you go back into here, instead of putting in this input local one index, I would have to put in a zero, then in the next rung, I would have to put a one, two, three, and I've done that in the past. However, that's a lot less uh, intuitive and a lot less practical when it comes to structures with a lot of uh, repeatable code. So that's how that's pretty much how the for loop is employed. It is very, very convenient. That being said, like I said, the drawbacks are the fact that it becomes a little bit more difficult to troubleshoot. So you can't visually see what is actually happening because the loop uh, cycles so fast through the code that you don't get to see uh, when this bit is energized. As you can see, the timers are essentially uh, question marks because they are cycling through extremely fast and depending on which time or you have set where it becomes a little bit inconvenient. That being said, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Let me know if you have any applications for the for loop. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.